folks, Marcus here from the Ash and Fly Shop. We figured uh, quite a few of you are hunkered down, maybe trying to fish a little bit, but probably tying quite a few flies. So we wanted to work up a couple fly patterns and we're gonna start a little section of tube flies that we're gonna do um, starting today and we'll probably end up working on a few different patterns that in some iteration will be available to purchase at the shop down the road. Um, but we've been pretty interested in tube flies and Will and I go both go up to fish in BC and we just see it more and more up there where tube flies are really recommended and utilized a lot. So we kind of wanted to fill that out a little bit um, and design a couple patterns with BC in mind, but also patterns that would work well down here um, for steelhead fishing. So today we're gonna tie this black and blue kind of over wing style fly. It almost has a feel of an Atlantic salmon fly too. Um, but we're gonna tie it today. It's a really simple fly to tie and you'll see why tying tubes is pretty dang nice. So let's get going here. So in the vise, I have the Pro Sport Fisher, kind of the large um, flexi needle on there. And I like the large one because it just gives you a little kind of a broad working area. And I'm gonna slide a black micro tube on there. And you just kind of cinch it back up into here till it till it stops moving around. And you always put this this knuckle end towards the back. Um, so I'm going to start with thread on here, and I've just got some Vivas one th one forty in in orange. So for a little dub ball on the back of this fly, I'm going to use ice wing fiber in black and. When I use it like dubbing, I just kind of rip it out of the package like that. And it will um, dub onto the thread pretty dang easily. Um, so I think ice dub is just the same stuff, just kind of blended in a grinder. Um, so if you rip it up yourself, it's really easy to, to dub it just like this. We're just gonna build a little dubbing ball at the back of this fly. Nothing huge. And I'm gonna pick that out a little bit. Cut some of these fibers so they're not too long, but give it a little buggy look. Then I'm gonna put a little black Schlop and collar on top of this dubbing ball here. There's a few reasons that tubes are pretty nice. First of all, from a tying perspective, I think because you forego the hook and trailer system that we do on our shank flies for steelhead, you really can save quite a bit of time tying, which is nice. Um, but also something to think about with a standard shank fly or a traditional fly is um, when you damage that hook on the fly, which often happens, especially if you're fishing sink tips, being able to change out that hook is so easy on a tube fly. Um, and another thing that's, that's nice about them is your fly is always going to be as strong as your leader material is. So if you're looking for big fish, like a lot of folks are when they go to British Columbia, you don't have to worry about that certain trailer wires that are out there or junction points. Um, if you're using 15 pound Maxima and a tube fly, you can feel pretty safe that what you're doing is gonna be strong. So I've got that schlopping in there. 
And that's actually going to act like a little bit of a prop for what will be the wing of this fly, which is just going to be black craft fur. But it's going to come in two stages, kind of a front wing and a back wing. So I've got this craft fur trimmed down the way I want it. I'm just going to tie it in right here. And then clip away some of this excess. And then I'm going to have another collar on top that'll be a little bit more visible through the fly. And that'll be Kingfisher Blue Schloppen. So I'll take one of these feathers, trim away some of the fluff. I'm going to put a pretty substantial collar on here, actually. Just tie it in there. Clip it real short. Straighten everything out here. Just get this guy wrapping over there. come right to the end of that craft fur that I clipped off before. And then I'm going to put another stage of craft fur over the top of that collar. And it just leaves, what, it, what it'll do is it'll just give this nice dark profile that goes around the top of the fly. And again, I'll just clip this craft fur as short as I can. Then I'm gonna tie in a little bit of flash in the fly that'll be crinkle mirror flash and I'm just going to use two strands um, just lightly flash this fly and I'll lay two of them on my near side get one hard wrap and flip them to the far side of the fly and get another good wrap I'll make sure those are coming back more or less to the end of the fly and then what I'm going to have on here will be, um, for the purposes of the video, will be real jungle cock um, eyes on the side of the fly. But down the road, um, there'll probably be an imitation jungle cock in the bins. So with jungle cock, I just marry the tips of the flies and peel away what I'm not planning on using. And I always tie in on my near side and then, then go to my far side. So I've got, this is pretty much 
the fly we're looking for here. Got the jungle cock tied in on each side. And how big of a head you do is a little bit subjective. I, I like a, a pretty decent bright spot up at the top of my flies. Um, Just gonna build that head up how I want it. And it's worth saying, so today we're doing this. This is just a little unweighted fly. But down the road, we'll probably have this fly unweighted. And then with this pro tube system, you could you could just do that head smaller and slide this bead on there, and you could have a weighted version that's essentially the same thing. It's just got a hot spot up at the top. But in that situation with the bead, you'd have a little bit of extra weight. Um, so then with any tube fly, you're left with the front end of your tube sticking out. And you want to clip that really straight and really short. And I always, after I clip them, I slide them back into the vise just to make sure that I didn't close that gap. And then these micro tubes are used um, with these little hook guides off the back. And I like to use the large size. And they come in quite a few different colors. Um, so depending on the fly, you can choose to have a hot spot in the back a color like blue that would just complement the fly, or on this fly, I'm gonna choose black because it just kind of disappears in the fly. Gives, gives the fly a little, little more um, kind of silhouette to it too. What we do with all tubes is we burn that tubing back onto the thread and then I always just slide it in the bobbin to make sure that that, that, that thread hasn't um, been compromised. But I'll slide it back onto the bobbin. And this is how, um, when I do mine, this is how I do all my um, cementing of the head. So I've got my loon hard head. I'm just going to get a little bit on my bodkin here. And I'll start to work around that head a little bit. Just getting a nice even coat of cement. I really prefer these days to do all my cementing with a bodkin. It's just so much easier to get it to lay on how you want. So there's a little BC tube fly that I think in some iteration will be available to purchase down the road at the shop. Um, but this black and blue with a hot spot is a pretty well-known combo, um, both in BC and beyond. So thank you very much for tuning in. That's a little BC tube fly, um, geez, that I'd fish pretty much anywhere for summer steelhead or winter steelhead if you have clear water. So thank you very much for tuning in.